Hey, how's it going guys? Jackson here with Toasty DIY and today I'm going to be showing you some of the basic functions and settings that I use in Ultimaker Cura. So I'm using the uh, JG5... So I'm using the JG Aurora's uh, A5S printer, which by the way is a really awesome printer. We did a video of the actual printer on this channel if you want to go check it out. But I have a basic model uh, loaded up in here right now. It works like a lot of other CAD software is you right click to be able to basically rotate and then use center mass wheel to actually move around. And then to move the object, you just uh, basically left click and then you can move the actual object around. So first things first, when you first uh, get into this program, I think it's gonna have you automatically do this, but if not, you just go over to add printer. And then you, it's whether you're not, you have a network printer or just like a USB printer, which I think that's what mine would be is a USB printer, uh, is that's how it's hooked up. You just gotta find which printer you have. So luckily I was able to find mine and I'll show you guys it right here. So you go to printer and see we have it selected. JJ Roar A5, A5S. So that should load all of the basic settings up for you. Going over to here, uh, like on your hotbar tab, this is all stuff that you can remove and add. So you can see here, like for material, for example, if I click on the settings, I can actually add things to be visible or not visible, basically. Um, they kind of already add all of, like the basics that you're probably gonna want. Uh, but as you can see, I've added a few things here and there that you know I felt were missing or that I wanted to add. So um, examples of that is like, if I wanna generate support, I added a few things because uh, the support part's a little bit eh, you gotta, you really gotta tweak that to get proper things done. Um, you only need support if you're you know printing things like, I think it's above 45 degree angles or something along those lines but obviously this does not have anything like that, so we don't need support or anything. Um, usually it's all gonna automatically load you up on the fine profile, I believe, uh, which should come with, so let's see, default is all of these settings here. Okay, and as you can see, I've basically just gone into the default one over here and just changed all the settings myself. Um, honestly, the default one works really well. The biggest things that I've changed are like the support, which that's not super important if you're not using it. Another thing I changed is I turned off like the build plate adhesion and whatnot, but just to show you guys basic settings here. So layer height is gonna be 0 0.1 for quality, uh, 0.4 for the top slash bottom of the actual print. Um, and then if you're choosing your infill, that's gonna affect a lot of things as well. I do 20% is like the, the basic standard. Um, so that just means if we go over here to preview, slice it up and we'll actually be able to basically watch it print in a way. So you can see I'm on layer one here, layer two, three, four, uh, six. And so you can basically watch how it prints. So this is that 20% infill. Do you see how we have all these squares here? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, let's make it, uh, let's actually do 80%. So it's still gonna be the grid and fill pattern. You can choose all different types of patterns based on the type of rigidity you want and how long you want the print to take. All right, so let's see, you get you to see how much smaller the tiny little uh, grid lines here are. Let's actually change it to lines and see how that looks. Okay, so yeah, you see how we actually have just vertical lines basically, or sorry, diagonal lines. So I mean, this, this all stuff affects the overall print time. It affects the overall finish of the print, how rigid the print or non-rigid the print is. So that one's pretty important to keep in mind. I say 20% grid's a pretty safe bet, or lines, honestly, it's just as good. Now, if you're using PLA, you're pretty much always gonna be around the, I'd say 195 to 205 Celsius for the extruder temperature. Um, build plate, if it's heated, which I highly recommend getting a printer with a heated bed, um, I usually do between 50 and 60. Some people like a little bit more. I also use a glass bed with uh, glue. I get a glue stick and I typically you know, do a thin layer of glue over what I'm wanting to uh, print. Just simple Elmer's glue works great. It'll work without the glue, but the glass beds, it's very fine glass. And so it doesn't really give a whole lot of, um, I guess you could say spots for the actual filament to dig into and stick. So I had problems with it dragging. So glue is my solution. Um, in the past, I've used masking tape. That works as well, but it's kind of annoying to get off. Now for print speed, this is completely subjective. Um, so you can see a lot of these have function um, keys, which is basically calculated based on uh, like the overall print speed, or it's just gonna, if I click this, it'll bring it back to like the, uh, the basic one. So I have it toward the initial layer, which is layer number one, is going to print really slow. So all of this is gonna print at 25 millimeters a second, nice and steady. You're not gonna have to worry about drag. You're not gonna have to worry about the filament, you know, feeding so fast that it can't, um, you know, the extruder can't keep up with it. So first layer, you always wanna have print slower than the overall print. But then once we get past that first layer, you can see that the infill speed, wall speed, basically everything else 
is uh, a lot faster. So we have that at 110 once we get past this first layer. Um, now for me, 110 is fine. I know like my old printer, I can print more than like 60 millimeters a second. So you gotta be careful about that. Uh, like I said, it's very subjective. Now jerk control and acceleration control, these are things that um, with like uh, the main Ulti maker printers and whatnot that you'll probably wanna have turned on. Uh, jerk control and acceleration just have to do, like acceleration is basically the, the rate the printer speeds up as it moves. And then jerk control is like the amount of, um, it's it's like, it's really hard to describe. It's like the amount of vibration that the actual printer can, can use to move around essentially. Um, if you wanna do some research on that, go for it. Uh, I usually don't use these on my printer just because I wasn't seeing any major differences. Um, Z hop, or sorry, enable retraction just means the film, it can go back inside of the printer whenever uh, it's moving. So it just slightly, basically the actual stepper motor slightly pulls the filament back into the um, extruder for like half a second while it's moving because otherwise you're gonna have spider webs and whatnot where the filament's dragging to places it shouldn't. So I recommend using that. Um, the actual printer itself auto runs the fan for me. So I just never had this on, but I've, the fan has its own speed control, or sorry, the printer has its own speed control on it as far as I'm aware. I've never had the need to use this. For support, like I said, this is only if you're doing anything above like 45 degree angles really. Um, and you can kind of play around with that. Build plate adhesion is basically, so I'll do like a raft. Um, that really helps out, especially if you're having prints that are sliding around. So you see it builds basically a whole entire raft around the printer. Um, and you can see there, you can, uh, if I go to my settings here, I could add, oh, hold on, build plate adhesion, go to settings. I can make it to where the actual raft has like different um, positions. I can make it to where it's not as large. Like this is a really large raft in my opinion for uh, what we're printing. Like you can see here, I mean, that covers like a lot of area. I'd rather have it to where it maybe starts like right here. So those are also things you can change. Like I said, really look into these settings. They're really awesome. You can change all this stuff. As far as like for, for setup goes, I mean, pretty much the main things I can think of that I've had to tweak and whatnot, um, all this stuff over here is basically, like this stuff here is just to be able to move the actual uh, grid and whatnot, get different views. Uh, these are pretty nice. This is where you can actually do like some scaling, or sorry, this is where you can move the print. Um, and then here is where we can do scaling. I can make it by percentages. You can do uniform or non-uniform. You can do snap scaling. So like here's uniform scaling. It's gonna do all of it if I don't do uniform. I can just do like one angle, uh, which is really nice to have in a program like this. Here's where you can change uh, the you know rotation orientation. You can turn snap off to get precise angles. So mirror, it's basically just like another form of rotation. Um, and then per model settings, like basically if you have, you can pull multiple items into here, you could say like, hey, this is just a, a support for another part of the print. So yeah, uh, that's I mean, the main things I can think of. Once you actually click, you know, slice, and then you can actually, uh, once this loads, go over to print, boom, like this, print via USB, or if it's on like in the network, it might say print via network. And then uh, once you click print, you can just watch it and monitor and everything. You can change the position of the printer from here as well. So, and also watch the temp. So, I mean, it's, it's a really good program. I, I have really enjoyed it. I know there's a lot of other really good programs out there. Um, let me know in the comments section down below, actually, if you guys use anything different and if you like it better, what things that you think make it better um, than uh, Kira. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.